Hello everyone and welcome to the week 8 edition of Instant Replay where I give you my take on the most controversial plays of the weekend. I'm Simon Borg. We start in Portland where referee Chris Penzo had a big decision to make in the 49th minute when Timbers forward Darren Maddox hits the deck on this challenge by Vancouver defender Kendall Waston. Penzo says play on but I thought Waston applied the nudge into the back of Maddox preventing him from getting to the cross. Penzo did call a penalty on the other end of the field in the 58th minute after Alvis Powell clatters into Vancouver's Christian Bolaños in the box. You can see from the super slow-mo how Powell is late and gets him good. No doubt about that call and Freddy Montero gets Vancouver on the board on the second bite at the apple. Now compare that play to the 82nd minute when those two, Powell and Bolaños, come together in the box again. Except in this case, I think that's a fair challenge for the ball. Powell wins it and the ref signals corner kick. And I thought Vancouver could have had a second PK in this one, a potential equalizing penalty. With six minutes remaining, Freddy Montero brings down the ball in the Timbers box and Portland defender Liam Ridgewell just rolls into Montero and and doesn't come close to getting the ball. Penso is right there, but doesn't feel there's enough for a foul. We talk about tough referee calls here on Instant Replay, and how about this excellent spot by Penso in the 66th minute when he calls this foul by Waston on Portland's Diego Valeri right outside the box. And the replay says he's absolutely right. And for my money, that's the best decision of week eight. Great eye, ref. To Toronto, where we had a goal after just a minute and change, but Chicago fire forward Nemanja Nikolic was correctly called offside by a assistant referee Oscar Mitchell Carvalho. That goal was called back and about a minute later his counterpart Peter Manikowski, he nailed an offside that I thought was an even tougher call. But the big debate from this game came in the 72nd minute with Toronto up 2-0 and it's this handball foul called by referee Silvio Petrescu but more precisely where he spotted it. Look, I agree with Petrescu that it was a handball. To me, Justin Morrow's left arm is extended in an attempt to deflect the cross. As for the spot of the foul, the replay speaks for itself. The infraction does take place in Inside the box. Referee Alan Chapman got the spot exactly right in Houston when Alex beat San Jose's Fataya Lache to this ball in the box in the eighth minute. No doubt about the penalty kick, and the Dynamo's Kubo Torres gets his sixth goal of the year. I thought Chapman did well not to call the penalty in the 63rd minute when Torres went down in the box among three Earthquakes players. I don't see a foul here. To me, that's Kubo running into San Jose's Darwin Seren. Good no call. To the wild 3-3 draw between Philly and Montreal, and the impact were at one point down 3-0 with Philly's third goal coming in the 38th minute on a penalty. Here's how it happened. Montreal's Dominic Aduro fouling a center back from behind in the box. The center back is Union man Jack Elliott, who assumes a great position on the ball, and Oduro just runs into him. I think that's a stone-cold penalty call by referee Nima Zagafi, and Roland Alberg says thank you very much. You know what happened from there, right? How Montreal came all the way back to tie it 3-3? But they probably would have had a tougher time had star attacker Ignacio Piatti been shown a red card for this tackle from behind on Philly's Alejandro Bedoya. With the ball long gone, he just rakes Bedoya's Achilles with his studs. That serious foul play to me and worthy of a red card. Piatti lucks out with the yellow from Sagafi. There was some debate as to whether Union right back Ray Gaddis, who was already sitting on a yellow, should have seen a second yellow for this clash with Montreal's Ambrazo Yongo in the 82nd minute. But when I watched the slow mo replay, I think Sagafi got the decision right on this one. It's a 50 50 ball. Gaddis gets there first, and he brings down his leg by the time he collides with Oyongo. No foul. Throw in. I thought referee Jorge Gonzalez nailed the call in the 36th minute at Red Bull Arena when he whistled Crew SC rookie Alex Crognale for this foul in the box on Red Bull's forward Bradley Wright Phillips. It looks to me from the replays like Crognale in fact misses the ball entirely and takes out BWP. And after the young defender was forced to leave the match, picking up an injury for his troubles, New York's Daniel Royer put away the Red Bull's second goal and that 2-0 result would hold up as the final. To Toyota Stadium where FC Dallas remained the lone undefeated team in MLS after beating Sporting KC 1-0. but I I thought they benefited from two early decisions by referee Kevin Stott inside the first 15 minutes. First, Sporting's Dom Dwyer goes down on the box, and from the one angle we have, it sure looks like Dwyer beats Dallas defender Matt Hedges for position on the ball. And in addition to putting his arm on Dwyer, it looks like Hedges also kicks his leg. Stott says play on. Then about a minute later, this minor Figueroa lunge on Sporting's Gerso with studs exposed didn't even earn a foul from the referee. I thought a red card for endangering the safety would have been more appropriate. Turns out Stott didn't issue a single card during the match. Now, Figueroa would go on to score the game winner in the 77th minute, but FC Dallas had also hit the back of the net in minute 15. Except that goal was called back for offside. And hats off to assistant referee Craig Lowry, who flagged forward Maxi Ruti, and from the freeze frame you see this was tight, but I thought it was the right call. 
The Seattle Sounders ran out 3 0 winners in LA, and kudos to assistant referee Corey Parker for keeping the flag down on the goal by Jordan Morris, who, based on the best replay we have, looks in line with LA defender Daniel Steris. The Galaxy were hoping for a penalty just before the final whistle, but referee Ismail Alfat doesn't call it, and although we don't have a second look, I'll stick with the ref on this one. If there even was a handball committed, which we obviously can't tell, it doesn't seem like Seattle's number 23 Henry Wingo had any time to react. Now, it was nil-nil in the 27th minute when the Galaxy looked set for a promising attack on this quick restart by Roman Alessandrini, who was fouled in the center circle. But the referee Alfat brings the ball back to show the yellow card to Seattle's Christian Roldan. Though I think many felt that Alfat should have allowed the quick restart, referees are obligated to record a sanction for misconduct at the first stoppage, even if this means delaying a restart. Don't confuse this instance with a referee awarding advantage. When that happens, there's obviously no stoppage in play and no restart, and in those cases, the referee is allowed to show any cards at the first stoppage in play after the advantage has been given. But in this case, Alfat had no choice but to negate the quick restart or he wouldn't be allowed to show the caution. To Rio Tinto Stadium, where we had a few penalty kick shots to look at in the Real Salt Lake Atlanta match. Two on each side. First, in the 44th minute, the score was 1-0 Atlanta when I thought RSL could have had a penalty. Look at how Jeff Lorenowitz applies the two-handed push on Luke Mulholland in the box before the cross comes in. No call from referee Ricardo Salazar. It was 2-0 Atlanta in the 64th minute when RSL's Yuram Ovsissian goes down in the Atlanta box and he doesn't make an appeal to the ref. But I saw Atlanta defender Michael Parkhurst reach in with his leg, miss the ball, and clip Ovsissian instead. Now, the two PK shots for Atlanta. Just before halftime, Atlanta's Yamil Assad was calling for a penalty and he's even motioning for the officials to use the video assistant referee. He's a couple months premature on that one, and by the way, he'd get a yellow for doing that once VAR is officially instituted. But I think Assad does have an argument as to the foul. The initial challenge by RSL's Danilo Acosta is fair, but then you see Acosta's off balance, and on the follow through, he clips Assad, who was continuing his run. No penalty called there by Salazar. Then deep into stoppage time, I thought Atlanta had another strong case. Check out how RSL left back DeMar Phillips clips substitute forward Brandon Vasquez in the box. The referee signals goal kick, no penalty. Next up, Gillette Stadium, where New England's Joshua Smith goes down in the box in the 11th minute. But DC's Maxime Tissot simply has position on him, and Smith doesn't even protest. Good no call by referee Jose Carlos Rivero. And I also felt Rivero made the right decision in the 50th minute, when it looks to me, at least from the one angle we have, like DC's Lloyd Sam goes down in the box a little too easily on the challenge by Kellen Rowe. Rivero says play on. There was a really rough challenge in this one involving DC Sebastian Latou and New England Xavier Kouassi in the 27th minute. And when we watch the slow-mo replay, I agree with the referee calling the foul and showing the yellow to Latou for the reckless nature of the tackle. To Yankee Stadium, where NYCFC were chasing a late equalizer with 10 minutes remaining when Rodney Wallace claimed that Orlando's Donny Toya committed a handball in the box. Referee Soren Stoika is right there and says play on, but looking at the video, I thought Wallace had a pretty strong case. Toya's right arm is really left outstretched and what I would argue is not a natural position by that point in his motion. With the benefit of replay, I would have gone penalty in that case. It was a frustrating day at the office for NYCFC who suffered their first regular season home loss since June of last year. And I thought two of their players could have arguably seen red cards in this one. First, there was Andrea Pirlo who from the angle we have exposes his studs and gets Orlando's Giles Barnes. He's shown a yellow by Stoika, but I think Pirlo was lucky it wasn't a straight red. Then it was Pirlo's teammate, right back Ethan White, who had a borderline tackle of his own on Orlando midfielder Cristian Iguita in the 59th minute. Yes, he gets the ball, but he gets a whole lot of Iguita. White saw a yellow card for that tackle, which I thought had enough force behind it to possibly warrant a red for serious foul play, although we don't have a clear enough view on the replay to tell for sure. Ten minutes later, White would foul Barnes, stopping what was arguably a promising attack. That's a judgment call for the ref, and I think Stoika graces White by not showing him a second yellow. And we end in the Twin Cities, where Minnesota United earned their first ever clean sheet victory in MLS by a 1-0 scoreline on a late goal by Miguel Ibarra. Good eye from assistant ref CJ Morganti on the goal. He correctly kept his flag down. Ibarra was definitely on there. But I'd argue the Loons also should have had a penalty in minute 40 when Colorado's Mikhail Williams runs into Johan Venegas as he's chesting down a ball on the box. Referee Fotis Bazako says, play on. And we may have had a case of simulation involving Minnesota midfielder Ipson, at least based on the angle we have of this foul called on Colorado's Kevin Doyle. I'm struggling to see the contact there, though I can see how it may have looked like a foul from the angle Bazakos had. Let us know what you think of these plays in the comments, and until next week, for our editor Rich Hernandez, I'm Simon Borg. See you next time!